Deep Cool has been doing decent when it comes to making super affordable performance air coolers. So when I got to know that they have recently launched a dual tower, dual fan setup air cooler, I really couldn't wait to test it and check how it fares against my Ryzen 3900X in my primary system. So here we go. Hey everyone, Mukul here. Well, I'm someone who just loves the idea of having air coolers around which can perform as good as a 280 or 360 mm IOs, specifically on those chips which are 8 cores, 10 cores, 12 cores or even more. So the Deepcool AK620 cooler was sent to me by Deepcool and I was quite thrilled to test it as soon as I got it. So I shoved down the other videos and I started focusing on how the cooler performs and I prioritized this video. So yeah. Well in the box you get the dual tower setup with its two 120mm PWM fans which are already hinged with their metal clips on the heatsink. I really have to praise the fact that there were no bent pins on the heatsinks with the fans mounted on it. The fans claim to have a 69 CFM fan airflow and 2.19 mm H2O fan air pressure which sounds good for an air cooler considering there are two fans on the heatsink. The dimensions of the overall heatsink are quite clearly stated on its website so no point in me reading numbers. There are six 6 mm heat pipes passing through the thick copper base which has a slight convex profile but really it's so minute that I can't really assess that properly but yeah it's somewhat slightly there. The AK620 weighs around 1.45 kilograms and is slightly heavier than the Noctua D15 but despite the more weight the AK620 is considerably smaller than the D15 which might suit a lot of use cases. The other dual tower option which is slightly shorter but is wider than the AK620 is the Scythe Scythe, whatever you call it, Fuma 2 which isn't available here in my country that easily and that's the reason I was not able to pronounce it correctly. Well apart from all that in the box you get a PWM splitter cable to connect both the fans to a single connector and to the motherboard and their own thermal paste with a long L type screwdriver. All the mounts and screws are metal and the backplate for Intel socket is also metal which is good to have. The finish on most of the stuff here is top notch. These are the AMD and Intel sockets the cooler supports. Well, overall from the packaging to the cooler itself, the design aesthetics of the cooler are pretty calm and it doesn't adopt any flashy elements over it. The fins on the heatsink are structured in a way that they appear to have different look at different angles. So that could be something which was either done for either the looks or the performance. Well, that's something we will never know, but Steve might know. The top area of the cooler will appear almost completely black as the heatsink has these plastic covers on the top. So yeah, I pretty much dig the design elements over the air cooler and the deep cool logo has been seamlessly embossed over the top too. The fans have a stealthy black matte design over them and nothing hurts my eyes here too. The flashy heatsink totally gets hidden once you install the cooler inside a case. As I was going to test the cooler on a Ryzen 3900X, for the backplate you gotta use the stock backplate itself for any kind of AMD platform uh, which the cooler supports. These two-way screws are supposed to hold the backplate and the AM4 mounts by themselves with support of these other four screws which were inside the other packet, so don't let that confuse you. I felt the cross hatching of these four screws could have been better. It felt as if it might wear off quite easily if they were screwed or unscrewed a lot of times just like us humans but if you're going to install this air cooler and be done for a long long time then this shouldn't bother you at all after applying the thermal paste i mount the air cooler on the chip and place it right on the top of these two mounting screws and then tighten them little by little alternatively i had a long and comfortable screwdriver so this was quite easy but don't fret if you don't have one uh, as the L-shaped screwdriver which came with the cooler would be sufficient to do this job as it easily cleared the height of the cooler. Because of the extremely logical design of the fans, I could rotate the fan and its clips however I wanted and this helped me lead the fan wires directly towards the back of the case easily. After that I make sure the cooler tower has no weird free motion just in case and then I proceed with installing the fan which I had removed earlier otherwise there was no possible way to uh, mount the cooler on the chip. After attaching the two PWM cables to the splitter, I plug the connector to the CPU fan connector on the motherboard and because I have two fans installed on the top of my case, it got a bit tough to plug the connectors so it will be kind of wise if you plug in the splitter before putting the tower in. I mean just in case your case also has a similar story which uh, matches the story of my case's case. Ugh. You can see the sort of RAM clearance the tower provides against my 47.37mm tall XVG D40 RAMs. So yeah, you might need to move the front fan a little upward to the extent your case permits 
if your RAM height is more than 47 mm. Because in my case, they brushed extremely fine uh, against the front fan of the cooler. But if you ever want to alter or change or upgrade any of the RAMs in the future, removing just the front fan from the cooler would give you enough space to access all the RAM slots on the motherboard. Now all the tests were done inside the Cooler Master MB520 closed case, which has three Silverstone fans in the front, two Be Quiet fans up top and one stock fan at the rear. Yeah, it is the most confused case ever. My primary cooler is the Noctua NHU14S, so the AK620 will be compared against it as I took a different approach in testing this time, so all my previous data is irrelevant right now. The Noctua D15 performs better than the Noctua U14S, which just very slightly performs better than the Noctua U12S, so just keep that in mind. I ran Cinebench R23 for all of the sustain power load tests, so each of the tests ran for about 10 minutes. At 100 watts, the AK620 performed quite a lot better than the U14S and the story was similar at 125 watts too. At 150 watts, we noticed the difference of about 3 degrees Celsius. At 175 watts, it ranged the same and at 200 watts, the average temperature difference between the two dropped to around 2 degrees Celsius. So yeah, I was pretty freaking impressed by the end of it. If we focus on the max temperatures, the thermal performance difference between these two coolers roughly matched the difference we saw during the average temperature charts. But at 200 watts, both the coolers surpassed the 100 degrees Celsius mark when the ambient temperatures were around 28.8 degrees. Now, because I do not have the Noctua D15 and if I had it, this comparison would have been even more fun. But there are these couple of reviews and they claim that the Deepcool does beat the Noctua D15 in terms of thermal performance. So I mean if that's truly true then this air cooler has a frigging bright future ahead of it. But that's a statement I really can't watch for till I do compare the two coolers myself. So yeah, there's that. Well even when the fans were ramping up at full loads, my ears really couldn't, couldn't differentiate between the two fans of the Deepcool AK620 and the one fan which is there on the Noctua U14S which is a good thing. But here are some samples of how they perform and sound at different speeds. Even if we assume the AK620 performs just marginally worse than the D15, considering different setups can have slightly different results, I mean even then for the smaller footprint and the noticeably cheaper price, there is definitely a cost difference here, it would be pretty hard to ignore Deepcool AK620 as an option now. The Noctua U14S at the time of me buying it costed more than the Deepcool's K620 and look at how much better the Deepcool performed against it. So we have a clear winner in terms of both pricing and performance for at least this specific comparison overall. Despite the fact the Noctua U14S is a single tower uh, air cooler and the Deepcool K620 is a dual tower air cooler, when I was making the purchase, the small di size difference and the cheaper price of the Deepcool K620 would have definitely lured me in getting that when I bought the Noctua U14S two years back or three years back, something like that. So I hope you liked my first on the video here and if you do end up choosing this cooler, the affiliate links will be in the description so that you can buy and I can earn. You can also hop on to our Discord server for more chit chats on relevant topics. Stay safe humans, that's all for today. Mewbot out! Yeah, a new cap!